Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Savior's is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ, whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us. Our contemporary worship will begin in a few moments. Good morning, our saviors. Welcome to you who are here in the Celebrate Center in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We're also saying welcome to those who join us by television and Facebook. It's good to gather today on this Lord's Day to worship together, to receive blessings from our God, and to lift up whatever questions or concerns might be upon our hearts. During the season of Lent, we encourage you to use the envelopes that you find in your rows to help resupply our crisis fund here at Our Saviors. That's the fund we use to provide assistance to those who uh, show up at our door and uh, are seeking maybe a tank of gas or a bag of groceries just to get them by. So we encourage you to check those out as you have opportunity. In our Lenten series this year, we are embracing questions. We're pondering what we do not know, opening ourselves to uncertainty, holding space for discernment. Now, mind you, that can feel destabilizing, challenging, even uncomfortable. So before we enter this searching time, let me tell you something that is unquestionably true. God loves you. God embraces you, and God uses everything, even the uncertain, to create love and connection. Greetings to you. In the name of Jesus, our conversation partner, the Holy Spirit, our great unknowable mystery, and the Creator God, the one who answers shame with love. Let's sing. Darkness fills the night, it cannot hide. 
I invite you to stand as you're able. When God made us, God knew what we needed to thrive. God made the earth creative and abundant, and God gave us partners for the planting, for the harvest, for the meal. But when God gave us an orchard, we hunger for more. So please join me as we confess our sins together. And first, I want you to consider, where have you gone wrong this week? How have you formed, harmed your relationship with God, with your neighbor, and with yourself? Let's take a moment for silent reflection. Now we confess our sins together by praying. God, we know we have harmed each other and damaged our relationship with you, but we fear that admitting our sin will only drive us deeper into isolation. So we sneak a bite from the fruit that is not ours to take. Then we throw away the evidence of our disloyal decisions. We create distractions to hide what we have done we point our fingers at the faults of others. We interrogate those who have no reason to lie, and we avoid you. God, you are perfect and holy, but we are imperfect and lonely, and you know we have broken trust, abandoned faith, invested in lies. You always discover the wreckage that bears our fingerprints and our shame feels more intimate than your love. What have we done? Is it too late to receive your forgiveness? My friends, even when we sin, God does not accuse. God only asks what we have done so we can set down our guilt. And God only asks where we have gone because God wants to bring us back. Jesus died to reveal the limitless depth of God's love. You can, cannot, you can doubt this love, but you can never change the truth of it. God knows all and forgives all. The only question that remains is whether we can accept love that is so freely given. We do. We embrace your mercy, and we thank you, God. Amen. You may be seated. this poster here. These are second, third, fourth, and fifth graders, and they uh, came up with designs on a piece of paper. We, we mashed them all together, and we created that. And they did all of that work, that the art design and the painting of that. Um, we meet on Wednesday nights, and a few weeks ago, um, uh, we, we only had a three-week turnaround to do a skit and a short song for you today. And those three weeks turned into two, because Ash Wednesday, we got snowed out. Uh, so these guys have got um, a, don't, been doing a great job. They've got a skit that they prepared for you with two classes, 45-minute uh, classes that we meet on Wednesday night, um, and, uh, and a song that they have memorized already. Before we do that, though, we're going to introduce ourselves. We do this every week that we meet so that I won't forget their names. All right? So here we go. We're going to start down here with Awesome Oliver. We're going to end down there with Valuable Beta. One, two, ready, go. Awesome. Lovely, you guys. Cool. Cool. Kind. Kind. Kyrie. Lovely. Lovely, Lena. Happy. Happy, Henry. Magical. Magical, Martin. Amazing. Amazing, Ariana. Valuable. Valuable, Beta. And down there, we have Terrific Tony, and I'm Jim, and Jean, and Dance and Deanna is on a college trip right now. And then at the end, we always go, Glorious God. Ready? One, two, three. Glorious God. God. And uh, here we go. Let's start. Once upon a time, there is a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was an important Jewish teacher who held position on the Sanhedrin. 
During that time, Jesus was teaching in the temple courtyard. So as I was telling you, the kingdom of God is like a man who found treasure buried in a field. Nicodemus watched Jesus carefully and listened to him teach. So he sold everything he had and he bought the field so that he could have all the buried treasure for himself. Well, that's enough for today. Go home and get some sleep. I'll see you in here tomorrow morning. Um, hello, Jesus. I've got a few questions. Sure, Nikki, and that's what I do need to know. Well, you keep talking about the kingdom of God. How can I be sure that I was part of that kingdom? That's a good question. In order to enter the kingdom of God, you have to be born again. Born again? Yep, born again. Hold on a second. Hey, Mom, this teacher says if I want to enter the kingdom of God, I have to be born again. Can we do that? Not just Buster. It was not taken care of first to you. And I'm not going to do that again. You must be 80 pounds, 80 pounds. Jesus, that's not going to work. Mom says no way. No, when I say you have to be born again, I mean you have to be born of the Spirit, just as you were born of the flesh. It means you have to start over with a new kind of life in your spirit. Um, I'm not sure I'm completely following. So, how can I be reborn in the Spirit? Do you remember the story of Numbers 21 when the people who were rebelled against God were bitten by poisonous snakes and God made a way for them to be healed? Yes, they had to look at a blonde snake that Moses put on a stick, and if they looked at it, they would be healed. Great, they had to have at least a little faith that God would do what he said. And, the, and the, he saw that faith and he healed of them in the same way God God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not be here, but have eternal life. That was amazing and awesome and joyful. Thank you, kids and Jean and Tony, for that wonderful message. Everyone needs a little joyful noise in their lives, I think. We continue focusing on this story from John's Gospel. Each week in Lent, we're reading a longer passage from the Bible so we can hear the interplay and conversations in these longer stories. Today's passage, which is from the third chapter of the Gospel of John, begins when the priest Nicodemus finds Jesus for conversation in the middle of the night. The reading begins. 
Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to Jesus, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with that person. Jesus answered him, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. The conversation continued. How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can these things be? Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we will speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Humanity. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Humanity be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Word of God, word of life. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, life is so full of questions. Sometimes they are simple and easy to ask, and other times well, they fill us with uncertainty and fear. We are grateful that you listen to us when we come to you in prayer. May we listen for that gentle response of your Spirit to guide us to greater understanding and peace. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to week two in this season of Lent and week two in this sermon series we have been doing together, Ask. It has been a great pleasure to ask questions with you as we walk through this time 
to remind ourselves from these beautiful stories from Scripture, like the one we just heard from John's Gospel, of the loving way in which God meets us in the midst of life. Each week we will hear within these Scripture readings questions of faith and life that, well, they challenge us in new ways. Along the way, we might even find that these stories help us understand things that we ourselves have been struggling with in our own lives. Through these stories of Scripture, it is amazing that these ancient stories of wisdom still speak to us powerfully into our world today and to each one of us. And Lent itself is really a special time to wrestle with the questions of faith and life that we all have, to dive a little deeper into our understanding of what it is we believe about God and ourselves. And this is what we hope you are able to do together during the season of Lent with us as we preach this series, Ask. So instead of giving something up for Lent this year, we've asked you to add something to your Lenten journey, to add a few more questions along the way. And in doing so, hopefully, we will all grow in our own understanding of God's love for us during this holy time of year. Today our question comes to us from John's Gospel, where Jesus and a man, Nicodemus, have come together one evening under the cover of darkness to grow in their understanding of each other. Nicodemus and Jesus are both full of questions for each other, and I believe respect and love too, for they ask their questions, and as they do so, they see in each other God's Spirit at work. For Nicodemus, he sees God's Spirit at work in Jesus in ways that he has never seen before. It was all so strange and new to him. And as Nicodemus questions Jesus and Jesus questions him, a greater understanding begins to grow between them and a lasting relationship that will bring them together time and time again. You see, Nicodemus becomes one of those interesting characters in John's Gospel that takes on a reoccurring role, showing up out of the blue on several occasions in support of Jesus. In chapter 7, he defends Jesus before his accusers. And in chapter 19, Nicodemus comes with Joseph of Arimathea to bury Jesus after his crucifixion. Although his roles in John's Gospel are small, they are stories of faith that we should not skip over too quickly, for they speak to us of a person who, like us, sees something in Jesus that is unlike anything else that we have ever known, a reflection of God that challenges us to see God's love in a whole new way. Of all the characters Within John's Gospel, Nicodemus has become, for me, one that I have grown to appreciate. He's a man that finds himself, well, between two worlds. One he knows, one that he has known all of his life, and one that has opened up to him in a whole new way through this stranger Jesus. Who is this teacher that has walked into his life and unexpectedly placed new questions within his heart? Nicodemus needed to know more. Perhaps I like Nicodemus because, well, he, he kind of reminds me a bit of myself. For I too have devoted my whole life to the mission and work of God's church. I've studied and learned in my own understanding of our faith what it is we believe to be true about God, and yet all my life, like Nicodemus, I have continued to wrestle with questions about God and faith. And more often than not, the answers to my questions have seemed hard to find. But like Nicodemus, questions for me have become a great source of comfort and strength. For within my search for answers, I have found a God who is willing to wrestle with me amidst all those uncertainties and fears that I have. Within these times of searching, I have come to see just how close God is to all of us and how willing God is to help us grow in our understanding of God's great love for all of creation. 
And I really think that's what's happened to Nicodemus in this story that comes to us from John's gospel today. One night when Nicodemus comes to Jesus with questions in his heart. The story begins in a really interesting way, don't you think? I mean, Nicodemus has had Jesus around for a while now. He's heard him preaching and teaching in the daytime. He was there with all the other religious leaders. He could have asked his questions then. And many people would have seen him and heard him do it in the daytime. He might have looked important or wise in that situation in the daytime, asking his questions when everybody could see him and hear him. But maybe that wasn't important to Nicodemus. Maybe he wanted more than just to be noticed. Maybe he wanted more than just answers to his questions. Maybe he wanted to understand who this man Jesus was, this person who had placed so many questions within his heart. Who was this person who had stirred his soul with his teachings? Nicodemus needed to know. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with that person. In the night, in the darkness, oftentimes it is in the silence of the night that we find ourselves closest to God in prayer. In the silence of the night when there is no one else around to see us, no one else around to hear us, where there is only us and God. In the silence of the night, that is where Nicodemus came to Jesus with his questions. Maybe it was because he wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. We don't know for sure. But as their conversation continues, we begin to see within them, within their dialogue, a back and forth search for meaning and understanding. For meaning and understanding of each other and what it is they both believe about God. All his life, Nicodemus had sought to understand God. He was a Pharisee, a man who understood the religious laws of his people and probably tried to live as best as he could according to these laws himself. And now Jesus had come along and what he was saying, it seemed so strange. It contradicted some of the things that Nicodemus believed about these laws. At the very least, it clouded his understanding of them. But instead of rejecting Jesus like many of them had done, or trying to silence him like other religious leaders were doing. Nicodemus tries to understand this strange new thing that Jesus was saying. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with that person. Jesus says to Nicodemus, very truly I tell you, No one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus responds, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Maybe it's our question too, but maybe we ask it in a different way. How can we change our past? What's done is done. We can't go backwards, the law is clear. And so we sit there with Nicodemus, staring at Jesus with a puzzled look on our face, waiting for an answer. Very truly, Jesus says patiently, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. There was something new that Jesus was teaching about God. Something Nicodemus had never heard before. Something Jesus not only taught, but had come to fulfill. 
Jesus had come into our world to die for our sins, the sins that the law convicted us of, the law that Nicodemus knew so well. And Jesus was now saying that the only way to be born again was through him. In our baptisms, we are washed clean and made one with Christ in his death and resurrection through the power of the Holy Spirit. Our old self with all of our sins is washed clean in the waters of baptism, and we are born again in the likeness of Christ. God had come to save and to give healing and new life through this one who sat and listened to Nicodemus' questions and gave him a promise that through his cross, God was about to make all things new. All things new, Nicodemus. How can all these things be, he said? Did he understand? Did Nicodemus get it? We don't know. But we do know that Nicodemus continued to follow after Jesus, listening to him, sometimes defending him, and ultimately standing before his cross when he died. What questions continued to go through Nicodemus' heart and through ours? Old Nicodemus was called to begin a new journey that day, to begin a new adventure, following and listening to Jesus, and so are we every time we come to God with our questions of faith. Christ sees us, too, for who we are with all of our doubts and fears, all of our uncertainties and questions, all of our mistakes and sins, and looks into our confused faces and says, I know who you are and what you've done and all the questions you have. And I've come to show you God's great love in a whole new way. Remember, I am the one who makes all things new. And I've already begun to do this in you. It was a new beginning for Nicodemus as he was about to hear and see so much more. He was about to see God's love at work bringing new life and hope to the creation that God loved so very much. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. How can this be? Well, wait and see, Nicodemus. Wait and see, people of God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tim. For some, the Apostles' Creed is like liturgical muscle memory. You can say it without thinking about it. But today, we're going to ask you to affirm your faith by answering questions so you might truly consider what you believe. If you feel unable to affirm your faith today, listen to those around you. Borrow some faith from them as we share these ancient words. Keep that in mind. If you are speaking your faith today, say it boldly so that you might encourage those who are unable to do so themselves. I invite you to stand. Do you believe there is a God who made us? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe this God sent a child named Jesus to save the world? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
Do you believe the Holy Spirit animates our faith and empowers the church today? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we sing together, Is He Worthy? join together in prayer. God, you shaped this world with joy, and you have placed us here to lovingly tend your beautiful, bountiful, and wonderful world, yet so many people feel divorced from the goodness of your creation. 
the goodness in their neighbor and the goodness in themselves. The earth, your creation, is broken today. We ask for your healing as we pray. Like a parent, you wish you could take our pain as your own. Yet if you have come to teach us and you speak to us today, why do we struggle to hear and understand? Hold us closer when we suffer and draw closer to our friends whose concerns we share with you today, Courtney Solberg and Gary Burnham. Your people, your beloved, are broken today. We ask for your salvation as we pray. Thank you for bringing us together to share your name and your purpose and a world to love. Thank you for Adeline Rose Walner, who has met you at the Well of Living Water in baptism this week. Thank you, too. We celebrate with Kawana Lamp and Tucker Gross on the birth of their son, Roman Anthony Gross. Thank you for healing our bodies and our spirits and our society and this place. Be patient with us, O oh Lord, because we judge one another, even though you are shamelessly gracious. The church, your holy people, are ready today. We ask for your spirit as we pray. Amen. Before we collect our offering today, we're going to prepare ourselves with another moment of prayer. We pray together. God, prepare us to give today to each other and to you. Give us boldness so we might ask our neighbors what they truly need. Give us humility so we might listen to their answers. Give us patience to tolerate disappointment as we wait for goodness to grow. Give us generosity so others can benefit from the money and food and other things the world tells us to keep to ourselves. Give us abundance so no one ever leaves here hungry. Amen. We receive our offering, and kids, you can come and help with the noisy offering.
Would you pray with me? God, what will you do with these gifts? We may never know, but we carry a faith passed to us through generations. We set the table with food and drink harvested by many hands. We break the bread of unanswered prayers. Use the gift we give today to grow tomorrow's mercy. Amen. All right, I invite you to stand, everyone. We begin with a few questions. Where is our God? God is here in this place. Where are your hearts? We have given them to God. What shall we do in the presence of our God? We shall give our thanks and praise. Praise and thanks go to you, great God, for at the beginning of time you wondered what your spirit hovering over the water could bring forth. Sky and sea, yes. Sun and moon, yes. Land and plants and animals, people made in your divine image, could you make it? The answer was yes. And you loved this answer. Everything you made was good. Yet humanity does not always act worthy of your goodness. And people have wondered, could a perfect God love people who were so deeply flawed? So you sent Jesus, whose abundant forgiveness, humiliating death, and glorious resurrection all answered yes to the question of your love. Now, humble people, we respond with our own affirmation. Is our God loving? Does our God work for the good of those who wait for justice? Does our God bring new life to those who have died? Together we say, yes, yes, yes. On the night when our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks for it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and then gave it for all of them to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus, you asked us to ask you for anything we need, so we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. My friends, if you ever wonder whether God wants you at this table, Jesus answers yes. Bring your unanswered questions with you because the Spirit unquestionably beckons you to taste the truth of God's love. You may be seated. Good morning and Lenten blessings to each of you from our saviors here in Sioux Falls. As you probably heard earlier in worship, we're focusing on questions during Lent as an exercise in going deeper in our faith. What do you think stirred within you today that helped you decide to join us for worship? Is worshiping with us, even if it's from a distance, a spiritual discipline that you try to prioritize? Is there something going on in your life right now for which you are seeking spiritual guidance? Did you sense a special nudge from the Holy Spirit encouraging you to tune in as a way of reconnecting with a portion of your life that maybe feels distant or even absent? Whatever the reason, we're glad you're here. We believe it was the Holy Spirit that brought us together, and we hope that this time that we've shared has affirmed for you the truth that we profess, that God loves you and will stop at nothing to be in relationship with you. Everything we do here at Our Saviors is part of proclaiming that truth, and the impact of our proclamation 
increases when we partner together to make it all happen. What would it mean for you to become a sustaining partner in this ministry of sharing the good news of God's love? Imagine the impact you could help provide by giving a portion of what God has given you in support of this ministry that we share. You can give securely online or by text right now. Just follow the directions that appear on your screen. If you already contribute to our ministry, would you consider increasing your gift as a way of broadening the impact of our mission? If you'd like to do that, simply call Barb Haugen and she'll help update your offering. Thanks for giving all of that some prayerful thought and once again for joining us today. As you move into the week ahead, let this question guide you. How will you be God's presence in the world. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Let's pray. Friends, now you have tasted God's goodness for yourself. Is our God loving? Does our God work for the good of all? Does our God bring new life? Together, we say it again. Yes, yes, yes. These last few weeks, a few of you have asked us, what's Lent? <laughs> Or, how can I get more involved in this season? Those are good questions. Not every Christian tradition has a Lenten practice. During Lent, we count the days through discipline and prayer, spiritual practices like worship and daily devotions. It's much more than just giving something up. So to join our Lenten conversations around here, take one of our daily devotion guides that have been prepared and placed at the Welcome Center, or you can get one at the church office as well. And come for midweek worship this Wednesday, either at noon with soup and pie to follow, or at 6.40, a light supper will be served from 5 to 6.15 or so. When someone you love dies, people come to support you for the funeral, right? But then they move on and you're stuck with this hole in your life that you just can't fill. If that sounds like your experience, like something that you're dealing with right now, then you should join our recent loss group. 
which will meet the next few Wednesdays in the chapel, 5.30 to 6.30, to have great supportive conversation together. We have a few things to celebrate as a whole church today. First of all, we say congratulations to our fourth graders because they're celebrating their Apostles' Creed milestone this weekend. They're learning about this central element of our Christian faith and leading the congregation in worship at 11 o'clock over in the sanctuary. So we say well done to the fourth graders this weekend. Second, we want to say thank you for your gifts that express our core value of generosity. A few weeks ago, we gave you the chance to respond to those horrific earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. To date, you have given more than 40, let me try that again, $4,700, which will be direct support to those who are most affected by this disaster. For all of you, well done. Thank you very much. And we pastors want to tell you something. The last several weeks, we have noticed new folks here at church, young and old alike, and we have seen many of you reach out and greet people that you do not know, crossing the aisle to talk with them on Wednesdays, sitting with them at coffee for conversation on Sunday mornings. Folks, if you are new here, we are truly glad that you are here. And our saviors, thank you for making this place a church of hospitality and welcome. Again, well done. To that end, let me invite all of you to a whole day of fun here at Our Saviors. Our fantastic lending library is sponsoring an open house, so go on in and make a date with a good book or a, a movie. After church, we have our long-awaited chili cook-off around noon or so, and after that, you can go down to the Holy Word Theater for a special screening of the Princess Bride. That's right. Just another great day here at Our Saviors. Lots going on. I hope you can participate as you're able. Now let's send you on your way. Go now in the name of our Savior Jesus, who always listens when we pray. When you leave this place, go and do the work of God in the good daylight. But remember, Jesus also welcomes those whose questions keep them awake long past dark. In your life, who loses sleep over unanswered questions? You do not have to solve their every problem, but, you will, but will you stay with them late into the night so they might know God's presence? Have a good week. Let's sing one last song. Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com and like us on Facebook. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.